Okay, first video for 2018. Let's make sure it's a good one. Now, 2017 was a great year for Battlefield 1. We saw the release of two and a half of the four DLCs planned for the game. We had huge updates on how the game plays, added progression elements and refinements of what made the game great already. But now we're moving into 2018 and that is a big year for Battlefield for a few different reasons. Not only do we have another full year of support for Battlefield 1, but later on in the year I'm sure we're going to see the announcement, the build up and then the launch of the next Battlefield title. But what can we really expect from Battlefield 1 in 2018? I've got a few points that I'd like to discuss with you today on what I think we can be certain of seeing and perhaps some other additions as well. Let's start off with some things that are 100% confirmed. We already know this stuff is coming to Battlefield 1. We have the rest of the advertised DLC cycle. The second half of the Turning Tides DLC, that's coming later on in January, just a couple of weeks away. And then we have the fourth and final DLC called Apocalypse. The second half of the Turning Tides DLC, that's going to focus much more on naval battles and amphibious warfare, much more so than the first half did anyway, with the update being dubbed the North Sea Update. Two new maps are coming, Zeebrugger and Heligoland Bite, and both of these have seen limited testing on the Battlefield 1 CTE so far, and they're likely to go through a couple of more tests before they're released to the public in the vanilla version of the game. The update is also bringing another new vehicle to the DLC. This is the C-Class Airship, which is sort of like a World War I helicopter with three gunner positions under the hull and a pilot position as well. This will move faster than the much larger airship Behemoth, but of course it will be much more vulnerable to attacks. It's pretty much a standard battlefield vehicle, though I don't really think you can call an airship a standard vehicle. Now, of these two maps, Zeebrugge has perhaps a more balanced gameplay offering with space for air vehicles, sea vehicles and infantry to all get stuck into the fight and get involved. Heligoland Bite is more water than it is land and it is definitely a vehicle focused map, focusing much more on the naval battles between destroyers and torpedo boats and the role that aircraft can play in the overall battle as well. Both maps are clearly aimed at more vehicle orientated players of Battlefield 1 and I for one am okay with that. The first half of the DLC we got plenty of action from Achibaba and Cape Hells. Once the Turning Tides DLC is all wrapped up in January, then we will be moving on to the Apocalypse DLC. That is the last of the premium DLCs that will be dropping for Battlefield 1, or at least the last one that has been fully advertised. And at this stage, we still don't really know a huge amount about it. The official description on the Battlefield website, that hasn't changed since it first went live all the way back in early 2017. It reads, Go over the top in the most infamous battles of World War I. Conquer bitterly contested ground with brutal tools and unique weapons. Now from that alone, I think we can be confident of some more trench warfare focus with the going over the top statement and a further focus on bleeding edge weaponry for the time with the mention of brutal tools and unique weapons. Now we already have plenty of prototype weapons in Battlefield 1, so much so the community keeps calling it out that they're prototypes and not weapons that were actually used during the war, so whatever DICE has planned is likely to be fairly outlandish I think. I wonder if they'll follow in the footsteps of the original Battlefield 1942 dev team and add in a secret weapons of World War 1 kind of DLC into the game with some just proper wacky additions. In Battlefield 1942, the team added lots of unique weapons and vehicles. They even added a jetpack into the game. So who knows what DICE have really got in store for this DLC. But it's expected to launch in early 2018, so that could really be anywhere from now in January, although it won't be January because we still have the second half of Turning Tides. Up until about April, I'd say, that leaves a fairly large window 
for this content to drop. We have to keep in our minds though that Battlefield 2018 will be announced at some point and if you look back to when Battlefield 1 was announced, that was in May 2016. So I would say that Apocalypse has to come out between now, January, and at the latest, May 2018. We're also expecting a standard DLC size as well for Apocalypse, with four maps being offered and a slew of weapons, maybe five or six of those. I've not heard any rumblings that this DLC will be extended, like the Russian and the French DLCs. A four map DLC is pretty standard for Battlefield. When the DICE team decided to open up the French and the Russian ones to six maps, I think they caught everybody by surprise. Outside of the premium DLCs, which might be the last ever to be seen for the Battlefield franchise if EA do decide to go down the route they did with Star Wars Battlefront 2 and offer up some free DLC, we still do have plenty of content coming our way for Battlefield 1. It's my understanding that DICE is planning to continue their work on bringing the Frontlines game mode to more of the base game maps in Battlefield 1. So far, they've added it to Amiens, Argonne Forest, Ballroom Blitz, Monte Grappa, Suez, and Sinai Desert. In testing on the CTE, we currently have St. Quentin Scar and Foul Fortress, but Foul Fortress is a proper prototype addition. DICE has said it was their intention to actually cut the map from the game for Frontlines development, but they're bringing it back to see if the community can advise and guide the development team on how to make the map better. The reason it was cut in the first place is that gameplay didn't really flow very well, but DICE are giving us, the community, a chance to see if we can suggest anything better. With St. Quentin Scar and Foul Fortress already in testing, that still leaves a couple of base game maps that could be developed in the future to support the Frontline's game mode. That's Giant Shadow and Empire's Edge. Now, Empire's Edge works well already on the Iron Walls operation, and it could suit another linear game mode like Frontline's quite nicely, but Giant Shadow, that could be a little bit trickier. I am confident, however, that we will see more maps being tested for Frontlines on the CTE in 2018. It just seems logical looking at what DICE did in 2017, adding more and more of those base game maps into the rotation. And there are new specialisations coming to the game soon, with four currently active on the CTE for testing. These are the much talked about aura specializations. They've caused a fair share of controversy already in the community, and DICE is looking to try and adapt them to see how they can fit into Battlefield 1. These were due to drop in the first half of the Turning Tides DLC back in December, but due to community feedback, they were held back and further testing is being conducted. Now, I expect these to enter the game in the January North Sea update alongside the other two maps that we're waiting oh so patiently for. Now, beyond those items, we don't actually have any further documented updates that will be coming for Battlefield 1, but based on this tweet right here, I think we can be pretty confident that there is more coming in 2018 for this game. We're just waiting to see what DICE announces as to their plans for this game and for Battlefield 2018 as well. I, for one, would love to see the return of the community map project that was last run for Battlefield 4 during the 2015 year of development. That would be awesome to see for Battlefield 1 between now and the launch of Battlefield 2018. This was a process where the community almost drove the development of an entirely new map from its setting, key locations, pathing, and even more. Now, the result was Operation Outbreak, arguably one of the best combined arms maps in Battlefield 4, and better yet, it was released as a free update to every single player of Battlefield 4. The project engaged much of the community that was still playing the game back in 2015, and that was a full year and a bit past the launch date of Battlefield 4, and we all know that that game did have its issues. And because development was so transparent, with more than 10 different iterations being updated onto the CTE, with new updates all the time, I think a lot of the community kept coming back because there was always something new to get involved with. 
When you look at Battlefield 1, this game is still pulling in millions of unique players a month, and it's pushing between 130 to 150,000 peak concurrent players every single day. And that's great performance for a game that's now over a year old and that's in a very saturated market. So I think there are plenty of players out there who'd be interested in helping and taking part in the testing of a community directed map for the game. Having another proper urban map in the game, I think, would be really awesome. Amiens is arguably one of the best maps in the game for combined infantry and ground vehicle gameplay, but Priest de Tahur, that night urban map that came in the French DLC, that didn't quite hit the mark. Another daytime urban map, perhaps set on the Italian front, I think would go down a storm. The 2018 year looks bright for the Battlefield franchise, a new game likely only four or five months away from being announced, and we still have plenty of content for Battlefield 1. Make sure you stay tuned to the channel for all updates regarding Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 2018. I'm working hard to always bring you the news as soon as it drops. Maybe let me know down in the comments what you're most excited for in the franchise in 2018. Is it that brand new game or are you still hyped enough for Battlefield 1 DLC? But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.